let us uh, resume our uh, discussion on dualism. As you all know that Descartes is advocating the substance dualism and in the last class I mentioned that we will be discussing the criticism of Ryle and John Searle with reference to Descartes substance dualism. We had briefly discussed about Gilbert Wright's criticism that is uh, how Descartes commits categoric mistake. Descartes is being debated and discussed for last probably more than 400 years now and the problem of dualism is becoming a perennial problem in philosophy of mind. Now, how does Descartes commit category mistake? Descartes commits this category mistake because Descartes puts mind and the body into two different framework and for him they are categorically uh, distinct from each other. Now, this is was not acceptable to many and Ryle understanding the difficulties uh, that Descartes is uh, committing points out that this is a category mistake. Now, category mistakes becomes a problematic one because Descartes does not see the interaction between the mind and the body and this interaction has to be a logical interaction. This interaction is not to be you know governed by the existence of God or any other mystical power. So, therefore, Ryle points out that mind has to be located in the body and has to be exhibited in our voluntary actions. Mind is not a mystical entity, mind is something that is shown in our everyday uh, activities. Nothing hidden as I mentioned that one of the questions was about is there something hidden. Ryle was certainly referring to the Freudian uh, notion of a uh, mind which says that there is a subconscious mind and this subconscious mind is not given uh, to our consciousness and that remains you know an important category for Freud because the subconscious mind sometimes can control and uh, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind perform voluntary actions which are known to the conscious mind. As you know there are many uh, movies uh, sought in this uh, particular problem of Freudian unconsciousness. Now, let us do not go into that right now probably we will come back to uh, this little later in our lecture what is the significance of Freudian consciousness. But today we are going to resume our discussion on the problem of dualism precisely giving two things in our mind. One is whether Ryle's criticism against Descartes is a little problematic and how far it is acceptable to others. And second one is as I mentioned earlier that we will be also discussing about Searle's criticism to Descartes concept of mind. Does dualism prevail is a question mark and with all these criticisms let us look at uh, the difficulties that uh, Ryle commits. Now, Hofstadter in one of uh, his paper Ryle on category mystic writes I would summarize the kind of problem. I find there are three important problem Hofstadter is mentioning. One is that Ryle is making a brilliant attack on mentalism in general and dualism in particular and the second one is dualism is not a factual mistake for Ryle. It is a logical mistake and the logical mistake is based on the problem of the study of uh, logic of language. As you know during that time Macdonald points out in one of his paper and all this paper published in 1951 after Ryle's work the famous work the concept of mind and many of them were discussing about Descartes problem and they were as a Ayer, Ludwig Wittgenstein and many others and Ryle probably sharing their ideas with us, but this piece of work 
the concept of mind is a classic to the philosophical community who is working on philosophy of mind. Now, Ryle says that it is there is something problematic about the logic of language, the way language has been used. And another problem which uh, Hofstadter finds is that Ryle is committing to a some kind of a sophisticated naive behaviorism. Now, is it true that Ryle is committing to that kind of behaviorism? What is behaviorism? That we will be discussing little later. So, keeping all these three points in mind, let us look at what makes the bodily movement a voluntary one is a causal question for Hofstadter and that is one important question which I was discussing yesterday. And this is one of the first uh, you know, disagreement with uh, Ryle. Ryle says that how are the mental concepts applicable to human behavior is a question about causation of behavior. This is something very significant when we talk about how do we perform voluntary actions. Is this voluntary action are consciously performed or they are intentional so on and so forth. Now, all intentional actions are conscious actions. All intentional actions are subject to our moral evaluation, whether being as a moral one must talk about or must say that whether it, this action is good or bad, um, right or wrong. This is how we evaluate, this is how we reflect on our actions. Now, Hofstadter points out that if somebody is performing an action, if somebody is behaving in a particular way, now these behaviors are certainly caused by something. Now, what is the cause of this action? One of the disagreement of Hofstadter with Ryle. The other one is, is it the behavior which is caused by the body and not by some kind of a non-material agency or the self uh, Descartes discusses. Now, if it is caused by the body, then what is the causal principle? Now, according to Ryle, there are dispositions and sub dispositions which can manifest into actions. So, body has certain dispositional capacities and these dispositional capacities cause action, cause behavior. Now, Ryle therefore, uh, according to uh, Hofstadter is committing to some kind of a naive behaviorism. Now, behaviorism is a materialistic theory of mind. There are other materialistic theory of mind, which we will be discussing in the next class. So, for example, functionalism is one of the you know, materialistic uh, schools of thought. So, let us think how does Ryle or overcome this issues. Probably for Ryle, as we talked about the second point that Ryle was only talking about some kind of a analysis or Ryle was giving to us some kind of analysis of the kind of concepts which were used by Descartes. So, that was something interesting. Ryle is not a behaviorist in the way we understand behaviorism. So, Ryle is, Ryle is not eliminating the concept of mind, Ryle is not reducing the concept of mind. Now, the question is, is Ryle giving an explanation of the concept of mind or he is just describing the mental phenomena say for example, volition, emotion, will are all these concepts are dealt separately in different chapters in the particular uh, classic called the concept of mind. Now, where Ryle gives an elaborate analysis of uh, th these concepts. Now, there is a distinction between philosophical explanation and the scientific explanation. Philosophical explanation is a kind of a description, whereas scientific explanation is some kind of a causal explanation. As you know, science follows the principle of 
causality and tries to find out what is the cause of a particular event, if the event is occurring in the world, then what is the cause of it. For Hofstadter, the question was whether Ryle is looking for the cause, the way scientists are looking for the cause of mind or he is just giving an analysis and the analysis is based on the logic of the language. Now, if that is true, then this kind of you know questions which uh, Hofstadter is making that what makes the bodily movement voluntary is a causal question, okay? because look at the last uh, sentence uh, in Riles is a question about the causation of behavior. So, that was you know, a point which Ryle is uh, talking about and that can be translated as this is what makes the bodily movement, movement voluntary. Now, the second disagreement which Hofstadter is having is that Descartes is not to be blamed for advocating dualism, because historically if you look at the concept of dualism, it has been advocated by the Stoics, it has been advocated by Plato, Aristotle and Augustine and many others. Okay. So, dualism is not an issue only with Descartes. Descartes is only trying to show us that how mind cannot be explained within the framework of a mechanistic world, mechanistic world if you which is given by the science and how can we talk about the mind with certainty that there exists something and that is a real one. How can we talk about such a self evident truth that mind exists. So, Descartes endeavor is something very significant in that direction. If somebody tries to read Descartes from this point of view, I am sure that he would try to find out how Descartes philosophical presuppositions are based on this epistemological concepts as we mentioned certainty, clarity, distinctness and self evidence. So, all this if something is real then they must fulfill all these uh, characteristics okay. and that will be uh, you know that will give some kind of authenticity. So, but Ryle questions the authenticity of Descartes, because Ryle finds that this is some kind of a privileged access. Okay. It is the self is only privileged to have this access to the, the mind. So, the privileged access thesis talks about that only an individual is having this uh, you know, access to his private mind and it is not accessible through the other meaning thereby others would not know my mind. It is of course, true that I am aware of my own thoughts as all of you are aware of your thoughts. So, and it is true that we look at mind from our own point of view is something very important. We will come back to that, but what is important here is to note that dualism is not a problem with Descartes, rather dualism is been advocated and Descartes is not to be blamed uh, for this that he is making a kind of a category mistake. So, that was Hofstadter's point. Well, let us see how do we explain actions. So, philosophical explanation as I pointed out earlier that it is descriptive rather than explanatory, because when we talk about human actions, when we talk about voluntary actions, now all these voluntary actions are having some kind of a purpose. Now, if they are teleological and therefore, they cannot be explained only with reference to the kind of a, the nervous systems function like a cybernetic mechanism. So, they cannot be explained only with reference to the physiology of the body, the physiological function of the body. The physiological function is all right, say uh, we do accept that there are uh, no physiological functions which goes in accord with our thoughts. So, there is a kind of a harmony between the activities of the body and the mental activities. So, th that harmony is not ruled out, but what is important is this that most of the time when we talk about scientific explanations of the mind, we refer to the cybernetic mechanism or the mechanism that are there with reference to the anatomy, human anatomy or 
physiology and they give evidences and science goes with evidence, because evidence will show us how it can be proved, how it can be proved that this is what is happening. So, scientific uh, analysis is mostly demonstrative uh, as you know it can be viewed from a third person's point of view. So, so the demonstrative attitude of science it is explicitly present in Ryle. So, therefore, Ryle is trying to give an explanatory account rather than giving a kind of a descriptive account of the philosophy of mind. Now, what is descriptive and why description holds uh, sound on what context description holds sound is to be seen. Now, most of the cases when we talk about mind is not an observable phenomenon, it is not an observable facts, all observable facts are explained with the help of a theory. Science talks about a theory which explains the phenomenon. If mind is an unobservable fact, then certainly we cannot have an explanation of mind in the framework of science. So, therefore, we need to talk about a descriptive theory probably you know, will help us to talk about mind. So, that is something very interesting. So, that science deals with explanation, whereas philosophical explanations are different from scientific explanations. And you all know Wittgenstein's famous statement that philosophy is not science, philosophy is either neither above or below science. So, the very fact that philosophy is not to be identified science. So, philosophical enterprise is something different, it is something unique and for Wittgenstein its philosophical explanations are ought to be descriptive, because when we talk about scientific explanation, if we accept scientific explanation as something true and it is fundamental, so far as the truth is concerned, then probably we will not see the significance of unobservable phenomenon like the mind. So, human mind and as an unobservable fact, as an experiential fact will be eliminated, will be will not be uh, discussed as it has been discussed in philosophical uh, theories. So, scientific theory eliminates probably the concept of mind. So, there is a, an, a danger in looking for a scientific explanation of the philosophical mind. So, philosophy has to differentiate itself uh, the way it studies its own phenomenon. Now, why there will be mind? As I said, when we talk about voluntary actions, when we perform voluntary actions, we do perform it with this idea that there is something called a self or there is something called an agent who is you know directing us okay, and this direction with a purpose. Okay. So, there is a purpose in our actions So and that is why it is called voluntary actions. Now, look at uh, now the way Hofstadter defines the concept of man. What is man he says and why this dualism? I quote Hofstadter, man exhibits certain characteristics in behavior, a complex persistence in variation, teleological unit, multiple tract dispositions and so on, whereas stones do not. That is where human being is different from the other objects, other th things in the world, other material bodies and look at the next quotation. Men are something more than the bodily, having something competent as body is not to make body behave intelligently and this is soul. Now, what makes the body to behave intelligently is something interesting. So, uh, there we can talk about, we can presuppose that there is somebody uh, or there is something called soul or there is something called mind which is directing us and that is not to be explained you know of when we talk about how there are multiple dispositions and the complexity of human body mechanisms that is not the issue rather how things are planned and how things are executed and so on and so forth. How do we imagine about 
the reality. All these are important. How do we rationalize our actions? How do we justify uh, ourselves? Now, that is something interesting that gives us a clue to understand this presuppositions that there is something called mind and that is real. And Hofstra says that it is like the pilot in the ship, he put it in the parenthesis. Without the pilot, the ship wanders endlessly. Hofstra mentions these lines, this sounds like Aristotelian and Platonic, because there is an end to life and human actions are directed towards that. So, there is a goal, there is a purpose. And these purposes make you know, our actions teleological. There is a telos, there is a purpose in performing an action. So, now let us go back to Searle's criticism against Descartes. Now, so with this, we I will conclude um, Ryle's uh, criticism that even if we talk about um, mind body dualism, we find that a dualism is a kind of a problem that would go on in the philosophical uh, discourse. Because looking at the Searle's criticism, Searle is raising this in his uh, famous Wraith lecture series on mind body problem. The title of the book which was published in 1984, Minds, Brains and Science by Harvard University Press, I will uh, refer to Searle's this particular text and the first chapter of this text tells us the mind body problem. Why dualism still remains is a fundamental question, because looking at Hofstadter and many others, we will find that mind is not something to be eliminated easily as it is. Probably mind as a substance is not acceptable to many others, And but what kind of dualism Searle thinks that it is inevitable in the discourse of philosophy of mind. So, therefore, Searle finds that there are two things which are incompatible and probably that is something very problematic for Searle. One, there is a commonsensical uh, picture and the picture is that man is conscious, is free, mindful and rational agent and the other one is that there is a scientific conception of the world that everything in the world is constituted of certain material or physical particles. So, therefore, we encounter the problem of dualism, because on the one hand we find that there is a world okay, and the world uh, is constituted of certain material bodies, the finest molecules, particles etcetera, etcetera, the carbons etcetera, etcetera. The other hand you have mind. Okay, and which is uh, treated as a uh, as a conscious one, which is free, okay, etcetera, etcetera. Now, there is some kind of incompatibility between the two, and how do we can eliminate these difficulties? Okay, how can we make this? There is some compatibility there, mind-body relations. Now, Sal is raising two important questions in this context. One is how human beings represent the world is something very significant. How essentially meaningless world contains meaning. Now, these two questions I think are very important to talk about the concept of mind, because in Ryle's discussion we found that dualism is threatened. We found that mentalism is also threatened and most of the scientific analysis of the, the concept of mind or the scientific explanation of the concept of mind after the 1950s onwards. The kind of literature which are being produced mostly are inclined to the development that are happening in science. Now, their inclination is probably acceptable, I mean need to respect the scientific endeavor which is uh, very productive, productive because we are finding more and more evidences with reference to our uh, know, actions and with reference to our mind per se. So, the investigation that is carried out by science is certainly a fruitful exercise, no doubt about it. We have advanced in the direction of 
neurophysiology, neurobiology, psychology, artificial intelligence, etc., etc. Now, there are so many disciplines in science which are studying the concept of mind, what is human mind and how human mind can be explained in scientific terms. So, that is that is of course, is to be uh, discussed and people are debating on this issue, but what is important is whether uh, there is a mind at all. Sal's first question talks about that. Now, how human beings represent the world? It is uh, through human beings the world is being represented. So, it is through mind in other words, it is through mind that the world is being represented and Descartes was probably emphasizing on this that there is representational mind and look at his idea of clarity and distinctness and Descartes mentions that if language intervenes then the representation becomes a, some kind of a unclear one. Okay? So, I mean this is particularly with reference to how do we know our mind. So, the moment I bring language, the moment I try to express uh, myself, there is some kind of a you know, gap found, but when I try to know myself, there is no such gap. So, that kind of you know, thing is advocated by the mentalist. Mentalist find that mind is real and mind represents the world. Okay. And the other question which is important, how essentially meaningless world contains meanings? He says, if the world is constituted of material particles, then there is no meaning exist in these particles. There will be meaning if and only if there is meaner, there is a knower. It is the existence of the knower which we will talk about the meaning. So, meaning is meaning with reference to the existence of a person who means it. So, there is some kind of an epistemological concern uh, John Searle here that Searle is not only talking about the ontology of the mind, okay, because unless the mind is real, it cannot represent the world. The other one is that there is a kind of an epistemological significance associated with this semantic uh, enterprise which Searle is looking for that without the knower knowledge about uh, the world is impossible in the in other words, without a knower, the existence of world is meaningless. So, all this meaning that we talk about, it is with reference to the human society, with reference to human life as a whole. It is nothing to do with uh, the world in itself. Now, there is of course, Searle says, this discussion has some kind of a spillover effects. So, people have tried to locate human mind from the perspective of computer science or artificial intelligence. Now, people have really taken the question seriously. Is mind a machine is a question. Do we think like machines or there is a ghost in the machine? What do we say? There is a little man in the brain which is thinking. So, this kind of debate is something very interesting and we will be definitely talking about it in our future classes. So, Searle says, does a digital computer give us a right picture of the human mind is a question, because most of the uh, cases when we find that our mind is been studied from the perspective of artificial intelligence and uh, the cognitive science claim is this that mind is like a digital machine and the way digital machine operates, mind operates in a similar way and we will be uh, discussing about it particularly Professor Nath will be dealing extensively on this issue when he talks about why computer cannot think and what kind of creativity computers will have and what kind of creativity computers cannot have or probably may not have you know the way we have seen computers. Now, coming back to Searle's discussion on dualism, Searle says mind body dualism has something to do with a kind of a stomach digestion problem. So, mind body problem is like, like a stomach digestion problem. Now, when we talk about the stomach, when you say that foods are digested uh, in the stomach, now digested through a particular biological process. So, similarly mind 
is a reality to us because there is a brain. So, mind body problem for Searle is not a mind body problem rather mind brain problem and that is analogous to stomach digestion problem. The way brain processes uh, things it gives uh, birth to consciousness. So, consciousness is in fact caused by the brain processes. So, that is why Sal says it is a mind brain issue. So, mind brain problem and the other problem that he finds problematic is this that in Descartes we are uh, know, finding a different kind of vocabulary. Okay. Descartes and the critics of Descartes are concerned with some kind of categories like either you are a monist or a dualist, either you are a materialist or a mentalist. If you are a materialist, then either you are a behaviorist or uh, no, you are a physicalist okay, or you are a functionalist. No, this kind of categories, the way the philosophers have, you know, have explained mind with the help of these categories are to be abandoned are to be uh, know, rejected, because those categories create know, enormous problem to us and therefore, we do not see mind as it is and it is for that mind body problem still remains a kind of an interesting philosophical problem to us. Now, once we start knowing about how the brain processes cause mind probably we will not have the difficulties in understanding the concept of mind. So, uh, Descartes is certainly concerned with the existence of mind. Now, the question is whether Searle is, is concerned with uh, the mind. As I mentioned about these two questions before that you know, how mind human beings represent the world. Now, certainly Searle is not eliminating ontology of mind. Searle is also not avoiding the epistemological issue that is embedded in the discourse of mind. What is Searle's interest here? Searle is raising a different problem and the problems are very important because there is a enormous development has happened in the uh, scientific understanding of mind and scientific understanding of mind gives a materialistic picture of mind and that picture is like this. So, there is subjective conscious mental states are not real. In fact, they are reducible to anything else in the universe quote unquote self words they can be reducible to and this reduction is a causal reduction okay. and there are several kinds of reduction Sal talks about it in his uh, work the rediscovery of mind, we will come back to those uh, criticism of Searle against materialism, but Searle says materialism has somehow rejected the notion of mind, it has undermined the existence of mind and that is what is not acceptable. Rather for Searle as a quote, consciousness is the central fact of specifically human aspects of our existence, language, love, humor and so on would be impossible unquote, without consciousness. So, without consciousness all our human aspects of life is really meaningless and that gives a clue how to talk about the ontology of mind. Okay. So, that is something uh, very problematic. So, as I mentioned earlier that Sal says there are four things we need to talk about, because these four things are important to us and they are consciousness, intentionality, subjectivity and mental causation. Now, all four things are problematic and they are yet to be given proper scientific you know, account they are yet to be explained away by the 
materialists. So, as I mentioned earlier that mind is caused by brain processes or consciousness is caused by brain processes and Searle's famous hypothesis is this that mind is caused by brain processes and realized in brain processes. So, Searle says it is the brain processes which causes mind or consciousness and again these conscious mental states which are caused by brain processes are realized in the brain processes. So, there is a kind of a you know causal connection Searle is talking about when he talks about mind and body relationship. Now, this causal connection is certainly different from the kind of causal connection which other emergentists are talking about. We will have you know exclusive discussion on the problem of emergentism okay, when we will discuss the famous emergentist Zagun Kim and Sir how do they differ? Does Sir agree with emergentist notion of mind or his notion of mind is something different that we will see you know in a different context. But for today let us accept this proposition of Sir that mind is caused by brain processes and that is how consciousness is being caused and consciousness includes all kinds of you know, mental states conscious or unconscious. Now, all these mental states are intrinsically intentional mental states like belief, desire, hope etcetera are intentional mental states. Now, they are intentional because consciousness has this property called intentionality and intentionality is intrinsically associated with consciousness and otherwise how can we say that the mind is about anything how does my mind represent things now this aboutness or offness is nothing but to talk about the intentionality of the mind because certainly the brain the stuff inside my head is not representing things directly. They do not really mean what they represent. They are just kind of a facilitating the representation. Okay. So, uh, the second question look at the second questions. How can it refer to anything? How can the brain refer to anything? So, there is certainly something okay, that is consciousness and it is that conscious mind which makes the referential claims and that reference happens if and only if there is intentionality intrinsic to the mind. So, therefore, it is the mind which represents the world. So, Searle is talking about intentionality and you know, his famous work intentionality which is published in Cambridge University Press in 1983 is something very important a text on the philosophy of mind and that is one of the original text of John Searle. Now, there the title of the text is intentionality an essay in philosophy of mind. Look at the next problem that Searle is talking about. Searle says it is not the problem of intentionality alone. Intentionality gives birth to another problem that is subjectivity. So, human mental states are subjective they are subjectively associated with mind or our self. So, for example, when I say I have pain, I look at this sensation from my own point of view. When I say that I have pain, I am looking at it from my own point of view. So, all the feelings, sensation and experiences that we are having or all the mental states that we are having are looked at from the subject's point of view and that constitutes subjectivity. So, subjectivity is an epistemic category for Searle. Okay. We will come back to that how Searle talks about ontology and epistemology of the mind later in our discussion on when we talk about the structure of uh, mental states or uh, the structure of mind. But the very fact that I am aware of myself, my 
intensive mental states which are internal to me are different from the mental states of yours or the mental states of other people is something very significant. He says those mental states are subjective, they are part of my consciousness and similarly, your conscious states or your intentional mental states or could be seen from your own point of view. So, there is some kind of a subjectivity which is associated with the problem of consciousness, the problem of mind and that cannot be uh, eliminated. And the other problem which uh, sir is talking about is the mental causation. Sir says there is bodily activity. So, for example, look at Wittgenstein's famous statement, the hand is moving upward and I raise my hand. Now, the second statement I raise my hand is a kind of a voluntary action okay? and the reason for making this statement is that I intend to raise my hand up. By doing this, by performing this action, I am giving uh, or I am generating a kind of a meaning to my action. But when I say that the hand is moving up, probably I am not voluntarily doing that, I am not voluntarily performing uh, the action. Think of myself lying on the bed and I am conscious of it that the hand is going up and down, but I have no control over it. So, the bodily actions, bodily movements are performed there without having any control over it, digestion is performed without my control over it. So, digestion palpitations are not voluntary actions, they are biological actions so of the human organism. So, now similarly brain processes is happening, it is natural biological fact that brain processes will produce some amount of uh, consciousness, some amount of mental states. So, brain processes do cause mental states and Sal says when we talk about voluntary actions, we explain our voluntary action with reference to a particular mental states or uh, with reference to a collection of mental states. So, that is the reason for my action. So, my action is intentional and there can be an intentional causal explanation of this voluntary action that my hand is going up and whereas, the bodily movements or the existence of my body is possible because there is a gravitational force operating around me that is making my you uh, know uh, making this possibility that I can sit on the chair and I will not fly in the sky. So, I am not going my body will not go up. So, there is a certain like a gravitational force operating in me, me. So, sir is saying that there is a world and the world has a causal influence on the material body and there is also an world. Okay, who called mind, which is part of that world, okay, and that is causing voluntary actions. So, when it, he talks about meaning, when he talks about representation, it is at the second world. Okay. Of course, Sir does not speak in terms of this world, Sir does not say that there is a first world, second world, or third world, but it is for our understanding, I am making this statement that it is the mind, it is through mind that we make representations and mind has a special role to play when it comes to our semantic activities, when it comes to our knowledge forming capacities, when it comes to our building up institutions etcetera. So, Searle is talking in the language of 21st century, Searle is of course, not really talking the way Descartes taught in 17th century. So, 
one of the problems that Sal says that let us do not talk about those categories of dualism, monism, pluralism etcetera etcetera. Let us talk about the kind of a reality which we are encountering. I think Searle's criticism against uh, uh, Descartes is something very significant in this uh, context. Searle is not eliminating dualism, Searle probably does not believe in th that kind of uh, categories, but Searle is interested in this question and many people have questioned Searle that Searle is committing a kind of a property dualism. We will see that in our next classes, but with this I would like to conclude that how Ryle's uh, criticism is significant in the direction of understanding the concept of mind and how Searle's criticism makes a fruitful exercise in analyzing the problem of mind. Thank you.